Grace Ash and welcome to my channel. I am in Round Rock, Texas. I am going to be here for over a week playing a bunch of tournaments, cash games, and I can't wait to take you guys on this journey. Today, I'm playing in their $15,000 guarantee, $200 buy-in, and 30-minute level tournament. I'm excited to get in there and play some hands and hopefully win some money. So, all right, I'll see you guys in there. I arrived at none other than the Lodge Poker Room in Round Rock, Texas. I was so excited to be back here. I love the staff, the dealers, and the players. I've never been to a poker room where the environment is so positive and just a great place to be. I got there just in time to register for the $15,000 guarantee freeze out tournament, $200 buy-in and 20K starting stack with 30 minute levels. If you're not familiar with the term freeze out, it means you cannot rebuy, you can only enter one time and if you bust out, that's all she wrote. I know most of you are itching to get to those cash game hands, which I did play some very interesting, awesome big pots. So I'm just gonna give you guys a quick overview of how the tournaments went that I played today. All right, I registered at level four, so I was starting with about 50 big blinds. I got into an interesting hand where the button raised and I defended the big blind with king queen offsuit and we flopped the absolute nuts. I thought I was gonna win a giant monster pot after I raised the flop and bet the turn and then on the river the board double paired. Now my straight looks like peanuts. I checked and luckily he checked as well and he actually showed the same exact hand as me so pretty anticlimactic and we'll move on to the next hand. At this point, I won a few pots and I've leveled up to about 39,000 in chips. I raised ace jack offsuit from middle position, got called by the big blind, and down bet on a board that was advantageous for me and really hard for the small blind to continue on, which was queen eight queen. I put out a small bet because I don't need to bet big on these types of boards. He folded pretty quickly and we took down a pot. All right, I made it to second break, guys, and I'm sitting about 36,000 in chips. Blinds are gonna be up to 600, 1200 next hand, so played a few exciting pots, but just trying to stay even keel and weather the storms and hopefully continue to chip up. All right, I'll hopefully see you guys at next break. In level eight, I had about 36,000 chips to start this hand, and the guy to my direct left was super tilted after losing a few hands, and he started to shove pretty wide, like queen eight offsuit with 13 big blinds in early position wide. In this hand, I'm in the big blind, he's under the gun, and he decides to go all in yet again. It folds all the way around to me, and I peel my cards and look down at ace queen offsuit. Gotta make the call here for under 20 big blinds, especially against a range that is really wide. I'm happy to take this spot, and here's what happened. Our opponent hits a flush with his three of clubs on the turn, but the river bails us out and we end up chopping the pot. So good news is we avoided losing some of our stack, but the bad news is we couldn't win a flip and weren't able to chip up, but at least we live to see another day. So a couple levels go by and we find ourselves completely spot dead, no spots to get in there and win some pots, make some moves. All right, so busted out of the $200 freeze out tournament. Uh, just couldn't really get anything going. I shoved 12 big blinds with ace eight offsuit and the big blind who was not playing any hand, super tight. She woke up with ace queen and that was all she wrote. So I think I'm gonna jump in the free roll now. It's a super fun tournament. And when I get in that tournament mindset, I wanna keep playing tournaments. So I'm gonna jump in that. All right, I just bought into the free roll tournament. I'm in for $110 and that got me 50,000 in chips. Last time we played it, we ICM chopped it. So let's do this. So the free roll tournament had already started. So I jumped in that and I bought in for $105, which got me in total 50,000 in chips. I won't bore you guys with this story. There wasn't much to say. The game plays crazy. People get it all in a lot because there's lots of rebuys and add-ons. So people are not afraid to gamble. I sat there for a while trying to pick a good spot to get my money in. The blinds go up pretty fast, only 15 minute level. So I found myself with 10 big blinds under the gun with king queen and here's what happened. Folds around to a guy in late position who ends up going all in as well. He had ace queen and I was drawing very, very thin and unfortunately I got knocked out. Okay, we finally made it to the Lodge Cash Game Streets. One three matched the stack and we're in for $880, which was about the size of the biggest stack at the table. 
All right, we didn't have to wait very long before getting our very first playable hand. My good friend Aaron puts on the $10 straddle under the gun. Next to act folds, and then it's on me, and I look down at the beautiful Queen Jack of Spades. Because of the straddle, I don't want to raise too big here and inflate the pot any more than it already is, so I decide on a standard sizing of $30. It folds all the way around to the small blind, and he decides to put in the call, so we go heads up to a flop. The flop is 10-3 deuce with two spades. He checks it over to me and in position, I am going to continue betting with my two overs and my flush draw. Out of position, we can consider checking, but in position, it's better to just bet when we have range advantage and position and a lot of equity on this board. I decide on a bit bigger of a sizing and I put out a C bet of $40. He doesn't think very long at all before deciding on the fold and we take down our very first cash game pot here in Austin. Just a few hands later, we find ourselves under the gun with Jack-9 of spades. Under the gun, we should be raising about 10% of hands, and even though Jack-9 suited is at the bottom of that range, it's important to have hands in our range other than just nutted hands. That way, on any board texture, we can have coverage and we can't be capped. For example, if the board came out 5, 6, 7, and we only raised aces or kings or ace-king preflop, we become very predictable and our opponent will know that we can't possibly have a nutted hand on that board. But if we retain hands like 8, 9 suited, 7-8 suited in that range, then we're much harder to play against. So I raised to 15 and only a player in middle position calls, so we're going heads up to a flop of 9 of hearts, 4 of diamonds, deuce of spades. We flop ourselves top pair here, and so we're going to continue betting, and I put out a bet of $15. He makes the call, so we head to a turn card, which is a great card for us. It's an offsuit jack. We now have top two pair, and so I'm going to continue firing, and I make it $35. He makes the call again, which now I'm very curious what his range is here. He seems like a very competent player, so I'm not sure if he'd float over River cards here, maybe hands like King Queen, but he makes the call, so we're going to a river card, which is pretty much a blank. It's an offsuit six. This is where I'm gonna tell you, do not do what I did here, and I made a very, very costly mistake, and I, for some reason, decided to check. In the moment, I felt like I was trying to be trappy, but in actuality, when you have value at lower stakes games, just bet your hand, because players are way more likely to make calling mistakes than they are to put out bluffs. <sighs> so as played, I checked, and he checked back and he showed Jack-10 offsuit and I missed out on some value there on the river because I decided to try and make an exploitative play but in reality I should have just bet for value because I had top two pair on a very dry board. Even if he doesn't call that's okay but some of the time he is gonna find a call there with a lot of his hands and so I felt like I missed out on some value. And this hand, there's a raise under the gun to $15. It folds to me in the hijack and I look down at pocket aces. I want to three bet here and get as much money in the middle as possible, so I decide on a size of $50. The small blind, who is a rec player and seemed very unsure at the table, he decides to make the cold call. It's back around to the under the gun razor and he decides to call as well, so we're going three ways to a flop in this three bet pot of king six nine with two spades. This board seems fairly safe to me. There is a flush draw and I don't think our opponent is very likely to have pocket kings because I would assume he'd make a four bet with this hand pre-flop. To my surprise, the under the gun player carves out a bet of $60. Now it's on me on this wet and somewhat dynamic board. I wanna get as much money in as possible because it's very likely that I'm ahead of both players at this point. So I decide to raise and I make it $175. The small blind thinks for a bit and then folds and then under the gun says those magic words, he's all in. Of course, I put in my chips to call as he had a little under $300 in his stack. The board gets a little bit scary on the turn. It's the four of spades, but we do hold the ace of spades, so it's not highly likely he has a flush, but the river is a great card. It's the four of diamonds, so now we counterfeit any two pair hand. He shakes his head and doesn't look too sure. He flips over his hand and he has ace king offsuit. We flip over our hand and win a massive pot, and needless to say, he definitely got cooler there, flopping top top against my aces. There's not much strategy to talk in this hand. It kind of played itself, but we will take down a nice pot.
I love Austin Poker. It's always so friendly and most of the time great vibes. And while I was sitting down playing, a vlog watcher came up to me. His name is Jimmy and he gifted me a really cool coin from his favorite casino. He brought me a limited edition $10 gaming token that's made out of silver from none other than the famous Golden Nugget. I think it's such a cool gift and thank you so much, Jimmy. I love it. In this hand, I get myself in a bit of a sticky situation. The under the gun player limps, early position player raises to $20, the small blind calls the 20 and I look down at 5-6 of hearts in the big blind and I decide to peel and make the call, so we're going 4 ways to a flop. The flop is 5-6-3 with 2 diamonds, so we flop ourselves 2 pair, essentially the effective nuts on this board unless somebody flopped a set of 3s or somehow had 4-7 here, which would be pretty unlikely, and we block the other set combinations. The small blind checks, and now I have a decision here. I can check and hope that the under the gun player bets, or I can start by betting here, which I could do with all my sets, straights, and 2 pair hands. So I decide to lead, which I'm not sure I love, but regardless, I made a bet of 40 the under the gun rec player decides to make the call for 40 and the original razor calls the 40 so now we're going to a turn card. The turn is pretty harmless, it's the jack of clubs. I don't want to stop betting here, I want to get more money into this pot while I think it's very likely that I'm ahead of both players. As far as the under the gun player goes, it's more likely he would have some type of flush draw here, maybe a pair, because he did limp under the gun. The preflop raiser though at this point, I think it's very likely that he has an over pair here, maybe pocket tens all the way up to aces. So I put out a bet of $100. I was surprised to see that they both called, so now we're going three ways to a river card, and I have two pairs and now I'm not sure what I'm hoping for on the river but I know it's definitely not another jack and that's what hits the board and I absolutely hate this card our two pair just got counterfeited so now we essentially have a bluff catcher we're likely very very behind what either player was calling with and so I think I have no other option here but to check and essentially give up on the hand with two players calling behind me when I lead the flop and the turn they have to know I have a strong hand leading into multiple players on both streets, and now I check just praying to get to showdown. The under the gun limper checks, and now it's back on the original preflop razor. He doesn't think for a while before reaching for his green chips, and now I'm just hating life, and he puts out a bet of $300. I just don't feel like I can bluff catch here, especially because the under the gun player could decide to hero call with his hand, and the only bluffs I can think that my opponent could have here possibly would be like ace king of diamonds, but I would even expect that hand to raise me on the flop. It felt like the hands in his range that he would do this with is possibly pocket tens, queens, or kings, something to that nature that he now thinks is good on this board. So I decide to let my hand go, and the under the gun player folds as well, and unfortunately we don't get to see what he had, but after seeing him play for a while, after. I don't think he's the type to bluff, so I'm pretty confident I made a good fold on that hand. It really sucks to call the big blind with 5-6 of hearts, flop a monster, and then have to fold to a sick, sick river card. And this hand, under the gun, one raises to $12. The small blind calls, and I look down at pocket threes. I'm gonna peel here and try to flop a set, so we go three ways to a flop of queen, jack, three. Bingo! Small blind checks, I check, and sadly, the original razor checks as well. The turn is a nine. The small blind bets 25. Now on this coordinated board, I want to raise and get more money in. I want to charge all of their hands, so I raise to $65. The under the gun one original razor folds, and the small blind thinks for a bit and then puts in the call, so we head to a river, which is a great card for me. It is another jack, so now we upgraded to a full house. He checks, and I decide to put out a bet of $125. He's gonna find a call with a lot of his better queens, and if somehow he had a straight or a jack, I wanna get max value for my hand, so I decide on a size of $125. He thinks for a while, flips over queen nine off suit, and then ends up making the hero fold. Nice fold on his part, and too bad we couldn't get called there on the river, but we'll definitely take this pot. All right, this was definitely the most interesting hand of the night to me. There's a straddle to $6 and one limper and it folds to me and I look down at pocket aces. I raise to $25. The big blind calls and the original straddler puts in the call, so we're going three ways to a flop. 
The flop is seven, deuce, deuce. Seems like a very harmless board. We have range advantage and there's not a lot of hands that my opponents can continue with if I bet too big here. So I wanna choose a size that'll get called by worse. I decide on a bet size of $35. I only get one caller, so we head to the turn card, which is the beautiful, glorious ace. So now we have top full house, the effective nuts. The only thing we're losing to at this point is quad deuces. I don't wanna bet too big here, especially if I continue barreling. He's gonna fold a lot of his hands at this point. So I wanna bet a size that he'll still call with a lot of his hands. So I decide on a bet of $50. He makes the call. So we head to a river card, which is the queen of hearts. Now, like I said, I have the effective nuts on this board. I want to get as much value as I possibly can for my hand. And now I'm just hoping he has a deuce or somehow a worse full house than us. Or maybe he'll find a hero call with some other hand. But I put out a bet of $200. He thinks and thinks and thinks for quite a while. And then, shockingly, I see him carve out a raise to almost about $600. And I'm dancing for joy inside. And then he pulls back the raise, grabs the 200 and chips, and tosses it in. He makes the call. I show him my top full house. He shows his buddy next to him his cards, shakes his head and said, I knew she had aces. I just decided to call there. And he had pocket sevens. Obviously, I can't know that he has a super nutted hand. At least we re-sucked out on him when he flopped a full house against our aces. So I'm happy to take down the pot, but a little bummed he didn't find a raise there on the river and we would have won a massive one. Either way, it's a great pot and one of the last hands we played for the night. All right, the very last hand of the night wasn't that eventful at all, but we do get to end the night on another win. So there's a $6 straddle on and under the gun one, limps for $6, folds to me, and I look down at ace nine of diamonds and I raise it up and make it $25. The button decides to call, the original straddler folds, and the limper calls. So we go three ways to a flop of queen, nine, queen, with two hearts. They all check to me and I decide to continue betting here as I likely have the best hand, although there are some straight draws and flush draws available, I bet $25, they both fold, so we take it down and we add another $50 to our nice win today. So we were in the game for $880 and we cashed out with $1635 for a profit of $755, which is super awesome. So all in all, we're close to even on the trip, even after busting the two tournaments yesterday. And tomorrow we're gonna jump in the $600 buy-in, 500,000 guarantee monster stack event, several flights. We're gonna try and bag this one, fire a couple bullets if we have to, but hopefully tomorrow night we'll bag this thing. All right, time to get some vlog editing done and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Well, that's gonna do it for my first vlog here in Austin, Texas. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, would you do me a huge favor and go all in and like, comment, and subscribe? It would mean the world to me. Remember, we're just getting started on this journey and it's only up from here. I'll see you guys next time.